Ah, oh, sweet. After so long, we're taking a look at this guy. I bet you don't even remember this guy. I don't. Who are you and how'd you get in my house? Between the Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon toy lines, there was a sweet spot with Hunt for the Decepticons, a movie-related series that didn't really have an actual movie title to match. It seemed to have more free range, with unexpected repaints, some of which better than the original, new molds, and characters. Override those seemed to have come out of nowhere, a forgotten lost Decepticon that was a surprise sent by Chris Vellner. While sharing the name with so many variations, mostly popularized in Transformers Cybertron, the Legends class movie toy transforms into an Audi R8. A different car and deco, but like Cybertron, it's still a fast machine on wheels and was eventually confirmed as a she. I can register the Audi shape, especially with the front grille, headlights, and the way the back rounds off. Some of the lines and details aren't as sharp in this extremely small scale, but the engine detail looks wonderful even as it's coated with a thick layer of gunmetal paint. Shockingly, with the silver windows and grille, they still give it gold headlights rather than reduce the cost of additional colors and keep them silver too. No painted tail lights, but what's most impressive is the green stripes that look like gold dipped in pickle juice. It feels unique, especially against the vibrant blue. I want to say the Decepticon logo feels nostalgic with the purple bordered with silver but two people are gonna get picky that it's the later design. Seems to roll fine and wait, no Audi symbol? Could they get away with that? Taking notes from third party it seems. Mold wise, what you see is what you'd expect in the size. However, the colors are pretty nicely done. Still doesn't make her really stand out, but she's basically a nobody in the franchise in this form. Can't blame the car though. Robot mode. <laughs> I have to ask, who took a look at the mold of Revenge of the Fallen Sideways and thought, wait, we could slather that in blue paint and call it Override. Maybe they did this just to keep the name rights on a random repaint. She's got weird proportions, thin long legs that get me the vapors, big baboozles that can compete with Shockwave, and giant hands formed from the back bumper. It comes off that she flings her arms around, smashing things like an inflatable tube man wearing boxing gloves. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Marvel. Head is really hard to decipher if it wasn't for the painted eyes. I think there's a nose plate. It's just a mess painted in silver, but at the size, I don't think it would have worked even if they tried their absolute best with it. Hinge and ball jointed shoulders, ball jointed hips, and ow, my knees hurt. She's got tiny feet with big chunky bits on top, so she's incredibly hard to stand. The hip joints aren't helping, since for some reason they don't want to stay in a comfortable position to assist. Does anyone still know if this design was adapted from Barricade. They look way too similar in the movie, but they never shared a single toy repaint. I will say, I'm glad there's more goldy green in the legs, so it's not just a bra strap. Do you think we can get this little gal a little more attention? Fan art? Appreciation? Anything? It's so weird. She came out of nowhere, wasn't even provoked to exist, nobody really remembers her, and yet here she is. I do think there's a few problems, especially how annoying it is to stand. Not impossible, she it's just tricky, but I think with a little care, she can stand on her own two feet. Physically and mental or whatever. Special thanks to Chris Fellner for sending this. She should be in Big Bang Theory with the bazinga she has.